Regulators have seized Silicon Valley Bank in the largest bank failure since the Great Recession. Customers were rushing to take their money out. Get the money out. There um, are recent developments that concern a few banks. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We've got a lot of news to cover today about banks. Uh, this is some big stuff. We've been talking on and on about diversify. Get your money out of the bank. You know, don't have everything in one bank. And this is really case in point. We're going to go over a, a few different things. The first one being the three bank executives that were involved in SVB and how they were selling mm -hmm. their stock two weeks prior to the collapse. Moral of the story is this is a big club and you ain't in it. It's a big club and you ain't in it. I'm not either. So uh, I've made warnings. Before you go down that rabbit hole, because I really want to hear this, because this is interesting. You guys, we joke around a lot when come, we come to this. We try to be optimistic. We're like, hey, we want to bring the good news. We want to bring solutions. Um, but I got to admit, we got a pit in our stomach reading this mm -hmm. story. This is, this is something we didn't want to see coming, and we're facing it. So go ahead. I'd like to hear about these executives. Well, okay. Well, before we get into that, Jim Cramer came out last month and was touting bye, bye, bye. SVB. My best performer year to date is SVB Financial. Don't you want? This company's a merchant bank with a deposit base that Wall Street had been stakely concerned about. SVB is the old Silicon Valley Bank. Recently bought one of our favorite research firms, Buffett Nathanson, and it's become less dependent upon private equity and venture capitalist offerings. Wait a second. Those dried up last year, they could come back. Yes, some of them come back here with the stock directly affects an oversold position. Stock was the fourth worst performer in 2022. I think the fears were not justified, and it's a very compelling situation. Hey, by the way, long-term private equity and venture capital, they're not going away. Being the banker to these invest, immense pools of capital has always been a very good business. Stock's still cheap. Now, you have to remember that a stock that falls 66%, like SVB Financial did last year, well, it takes it a lot more to recover. After losing two-thirds of your value, you need a 200% gain to get back to even. This is arithmetic. Some people call it geometry. So you could argue SVB's nearly 40% rally this year is barely a drop in the bucket. And that's how I want you to think it. I think it's also a good example of why these bounce-back moves might be far from over. These stocks could have more room to run especially if you think they were driven down to artificially low levels by tax law selling, artificial dumping. You know, it, it reminds me of Bear Stearns. You remember that? Yep. He was pumping it five days before the bottom fell out of it. It was like 62 bucks and went all the way down to $2 or something. I mean, what is the deal with that guy? I mean, this coincidence, maybe not. But this is the most important news that I can think of that shows you that it's a big club and we ain't in it. Uh, what did these three SVB execs know? Now, this was 12 days on February 27th, 12 days before it happened. Gregory Becker, the CEO of Silicon Bank Valley, sold $3.6 million worth of his shares. That's 11%. It gets worse. The CFO, Daniel Beck, he sold 32% of his shares. And the CMO, Michelle Draper, sold 28% of their shares. What did they know? Yep. It's an inside job, and the middle class always pays the price. Yep. Always. Uh, none of them had sold any, anything sizable for a year or so before the most recent pre-collapse sale. So, On the heels of that, so I watched a Fox interview of a lady who owned a bank, I mean a company, and she had money in this bank. She has like a tune of $10 million. She had diversified, though, so she was very thankful she had had like several other banks. But she was telling on Fox, on the Fox interview that they actually were calling these companies that were in this venture group, and they were telling them, hey, we are selling these bonds. Get your money out now. She said, I didn't get that call. She said, because I was not in that venture group or whatever. But so they were actively, knew, they knew something was happening, and they were telling these companies, get your money out, is what she said. She wasn't in the club. Nope, she was not in the club. And she said, I don't know what I'm going to do. She said, thankfully, I have two other banks. I'm hopefully going to be able to pay my employees. She said, but I know several people that have all their money in this bank, and they're not going to be able to pay their they're employees. Not, that's the big takeaway is the employees that aren't going to get paid. Yep. The bank people, the bank employees are not going to have a job. You know, this is a big deal. This is the second largest bank to go yep, belly up. Since 2008. Yep. So don't, and J Jeanette Yellen, 
is coming out saying, you know, we're not going to bail them out, but we're going to take care of the the people that had their money in the bank. They're really going to try to downplay this and because they the last thing they want is a bunch of fear at this moment. I don't think they're ready to flip the script and push CBDCs just yet. That's coming, I do believe. As more banks fail, you're going to start hearing, if you'd have had a CBDC, then none of this would have happened. You know, you wouldn't have to worry about these banks doing stuff. You, you could just be dealing directly with the central bank. That's how they're going to try to sell it, along with who else, who knows what else, you know, uh, stimmies, checks, and UBI, and welfare, and everything else you could possibly imagine. You know, paying your taxes, do you have the the jab, you know, all that stuff is going to play into it. I'm not going to get on that. But this is what Secretary Janet Yellen said. Sunday, that's today. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> there are fears that some workers across the country won't receive their paychecks. Uh, Yellen in an interview. I'd like to ask, stop on that for a second. I want to really want to talk about this because I don't think people really, really grasp this. Okay. Um, everybody, when they see a, a bank run like this, they're like, oh, this bank was mainly with big businesses. It seems like, from what I can gather, it was mainly big businesses that were had deposits, and they're like, "This doesn't affect me. This is I, I am part of a local business, a little bank or whatever." And I don't, I don't pe think people re realize the domino effect. If these banks, that these companies that are in these banks, cannot pay their employees, which probably have other small businesses, which trickle down, they're going to affect you. And I guess that's what I don't think people really grasp. And when you start looking at the line. And you put a time or you put a, a line together. Okay, this person that owns this company has access to this bank, but yet they pay these these people. Well, these people have um, all these small banks' deposits are in there. Mm -hmm. Now those small banks are not getting their deposits because they're not getting their checks. Therefore, they have no money to give back out. So when you go to that bank, that small bank, to say, I'd like five grand, there is going to be no more five grand because this bank couldn't pay this employee, they didn't, weren't depositing money. And I think it's a trickle-down effect that it might be two or three weeks before you see it, but it's something to really pay attention to. And I think that's where people, they're just like, oh, it's a big bank that, that closed. Well, this is going to spark fear, and it's it's already happening. Your phone's blowing up. Yes. People are wanting to move funds out of the bank. I'm getting calls right now. Hey, you know, I got a bunch of money in brokerages. I got a bunch of money in the bank. And, mm -hmm. you know, I have money in brokerages. I have money in the bank, too. But we do keep money outside the bank. You know, I talk a lot about being your own bank, yep. have your precious metals for these times. This is this is it. Yep. We don't have to go stand in line at the bank if that happens. You know, I mean, God forbid that happen. I do not want that to Me happen. Me either. I'm not trying to spread fear. No. This is the news, guys. This is actually happening in real time. We're living through it mm -hmm. again. Now, Yellen says they're not going to come out and bail them out. Nope. She says this is way different than 2008. Quote. The American banking system is really safe and well capitalized. It's resilient. Silicon Valley Bank is the nation's 16th largest bank. It was the second biggest bank failure in the U.S. history. The moral of the story is the House Speaker Kevin McCarthy came out and he said they do have the tools to handle the current situation. That's what you're going to start hearing that a lot. Mm. They do not know the seriousness uh, of this. They are working to try to come forward with some announcements before the markets open. So. Here's the tools they have. Quantitative easing or quantitative tightening. They can raise interest rates. Or bail rate. in. I they, think they could bail that. in. Yes, they could bail in. Uh, people forget that. I think that's on the books. That is horrifying. Uh, they, they very well could do that. I mean, it's so to books. me, when, Jen, when Yellen said that, she goes, oh, we are not going to do what we did before. We're not going to bail them out because the, the last time it was such a public outcry of like, this is not fair, using taxpayer money. And they put that on the books. It started in eight and was passed into what, 10 or 12 or 2012. You guys, this is a perfect scenario to use a bail in. Well, that would sure enough crush the economy, just like these interest rates are going to do. I said the other day, uh, for every 1% they raise interest rates, it takes $50 billion out of the middle mm -hmm. class's mm -hmm. pocketbook directly from them mm -hmm. uh you know the people in the club is not going to hurt them too much you know they got wealthy after the last debacle and you know this is more of the same sorry i interrupted you earlier talking about quantitative easing and all that I well that's you. that's their tools they, mm -hmm. they can quantitative ease or quantitative tighten now they're tightening they're raising mm -hmm. interest rates and that's pretty much it besides the outlandish thought of a bank bail in I, that's really hard for me to wrap my mind around it is on the books and i do think it'll probably happen one day i don't think we're there yet though I, I hope not. I, I really don't. 
Um, but we're going to see fireworks, guys. We're looking at uh, a market correction between 10% and 30%. That's what I believe. You know, and there's no telling what's going to happen Monday. And like I said before, if you're doing business with Stacy already, please be patient because there's uh, she does a really good job of taking care of people and their every need. So, you know, when you're talking to her on the phone, try to make it short because it's. <laughs> but it's, I like hearing your she stories loves, too. Yeah, she, she loves because it. You guys give me so many. Examples. But you're taking away from other people that are true, trying. True. True. Yeah. But, so just keep that in mind. But you do, and I want to give you a couple actually of the stories that you guys have been talking about banks. Before we go on real quick though, tomorrow we got the Federal Reserve meeting, and now the FDIC has come out along with the Federal Reserve, and they're going to maybe do a joint fund to help with these backstop depositors and stuff. What all that means, I'm not exactly sure. You guys can maybe fill me in a little bit more. But I want to tell you some of the things that you guys have called in and told me personally. We did the story the other day about um, the, the bank manager that had gone into our account personally. We've had so many of you guys reach out to us and tell us different stories that have happened. And one actually allowed me to share her information. She went into the bank, and the bank manager said, oh, my goodness, you've lost weight. And she said, yes, I have. And she's like, well, what did you do? And the lady was like, just kind of didn't really answer she because in her head she's thinking it's none of your business so while she's sitting there waiting for a transaction to be processed the bank manager walks away and then comes back and goes oh my goodness you've been doing weight watchers and the lady goes excuse me how did you know that she had gone into her account while she was sitting there watched and saw her um her transactions and had seen that she was doing weight watchers and it's just I'm not saying these bank people are bad a lot of them they're just doing jobs like everybody else but you guys they are in charge they have possession of a lot of our information, and they should be just like these executives that sold off their stocks. When I heard that, when they sold off days before, they knew. Twelve days before, yeah. I mean, that's not right. No, the SEC ought to be crawling all over them. And yes. If they're not, I'm going to be pissed off about it because that is not. No. This is not the way it's supposed to go. No, <clears throat> it's not at all. And then I had another uh, gentleman call in, and he said, well, my wife was not on board. He said, but after the bank closed Friday, he said, she called me frantic and said, you better get some silver. And he told her, he said, well, I've already bought some. You just didn't know about it, and I'll be glad to make another order, which he did, and he called. We were kind of joking about it. Um, but that lady that I was talking about at the, the Fox interview, she was pretty forthcoming. I was really surprised. She was pretty... She said, look, I'm not in the know like a lot of these people. She said, I was surprised at the number of people that got phone calls that said, hey, get your money out of the bank. She said, I was not part of this venture group. Um, she said, but somehow I had the knowledge, she said, to diversify. She said, so I have two other banks. And she said, one of them is a little bit we're, we're worried about. But she said, the third one seems to be strong. I'll be able to pay my employees. She said, so that I'm not having to worry about right now. But these, But she said a lot of her friends all their money is tied up in this bank. So you guys think about that. If all their money is tied up in that bank, you can't pay your employees. Um, let's see, there was another one that said, um, oh, there was another one she called in, and she had a fairly large sum of money that hit in large bills um, that she said, hey, I would like to take this money and put it into smaller bills if you guys are okay with this. They absolutely would not do it. She said, well, can I deposit it and make an order of, say, 20s and 10s? They said, absolutely, we'll take your money. But we wouldn't. They would not make an order to give her back twenties and tens. Um. So she didn't know what she was going to do. She so, called me. Go ahead. No. Why are we messing with banks? You know, <laughs> other than uh, to move money from here to there. You know, business accounts. It's just pay, story payroll, after story. Payroll stuff like that. Uh, I, it makes me want to do get more out. You know, and you're you're seeing that now with precious metals. And I know people are. There's fixing to be a major move Monday. There's going to be people piling up at the bank. The last time this happened, there was people carrying suitcases up there thinking they're going to get their money, and they're just turned around. You know, they don't have it. Yeah. You know, that's – they're sorry. Now that's how it works. No, so I actually went to two banks when that happened Friday because I had some business to do anyway. So I asked these banks specifically, and these aren't the tellers. Like I asked people that were in the offices and stuff like that. I said, are you guys trained at all to do any kind of like – um, well, that if you had a bank run or if people started coming in and drawing cash out rapidly or she goes, no, we've never been trained on any of that. I said, have you heard about the bank in California? Both banks said, no, we, now they might've been lying. I don't know. I'm not telling the truth. They might've been told not to say, but they're like, no, we need to Google that as soon as you leave. And I said, yeah, no, they did. And then they said, um, well, I asked them, I said, so is there any kind of policies or any kind of training that you guys do is anything mentioned in any kind of meetings about if possibly this was going to be issue and both of them looked at me and said Stacy this hasn't been mentioned ever since they've been working there 
I was like, wow. I mean, we're living in a society that people talk about this. I even told him, I said, just so you guys know, you can go on YouTube. People are talking about this a lot. About their, oh, I even asked one girl. I said, well, have you heard about people maybe buying precious metals? And she goes, oh, my goodness. I would be more scared of precious metals than my money in the bank. <laughs> and I was like, I just shut up after that. I'm like, all right, got it. Yeah, um, but, she'll learn the hard way. But, yeah, so that kind of seems to the mentality. Also, let's see. Before uh, we go too much further, a while back – there was a man, um, John Paul Jackson. He was a preacher, and he made a lot of prophetic statements. Yeah. And I started following him a couple years ago, and he's dead now. Now, that's the strange part. He prophesied things 12 years ago, and uh, I think it was 2012. Yeah, 11 years ago. And he died in 2015, and the things that he came out and said, like one of them was, uh, banks too big to fail, fail. So I get, I get headlines from heaven about things we're going to be reading in newspapers uh, around the United States and, and even around the world in, in some cases. So too big to fail, fails, nation's bank being pushed. And I don't, know, I don't know how all this is going to happen, but because of certain bank failures, a national bank is going to be pushed. Too big to fail fails, nation's bank being pushed. I believe what's going to happen is they're going to nationalize Bank of America, and it will change the entire banking system uh, in the United States, perhaps in the world when that happens. It will set the precedent for the next phase of, of economic things. I'm not very easily tricked, guys. I'm pretty skeptical about everything. If you know me, you know, you know that for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm a real, you know, I'm kind of a skeptic about things, but um, everything kind of lines up with what he's saying. So I'm going to Probably, I'm going to put that video in the description. So click on it and watch the headlines that he says he gets from heaven. And I think I believe him. And um, it's just odd that people that make these prophecies that are true don't get, they're not alive when they happen, it seems. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the first thing that, that came to mind when I was watching these banks fail and uh, yell and come out and say, we're not bailing them out because they really can't. You can't mm -hmm. raise interest rates, quantitative tightening, and then start printing money from thin air like they can at the drop of a hat. Now, and, and so I think it's a lot like uh, Jack from Nobody Special says, you know, they're going to wait till we're just absolutely begging for it. Mm -hmm. People are just, you know, we're going to do this for the middle class and we're going to help you guys out. It'll probably be in the form of CBDC. I don't know. But, you know, just check that out and come up with your own thoughts about mm -hmm. it. And, and, you know, come up with your own convictions about how much money you should keep in the bank. And I, you got a question the other day. Uh, a lady was really heavy into crypto and it went from yeah a, a lot of money to about a tenth of that and she was wanting to get into precious metals real heavy and stacy talked to her and she you know we don't want to persuade anybody one way or another but she explained to her you know how much do you have you know you don't want to get too much into anything right you don't want to put right. all your money into anything every time i've done that i've failed and i know one person maybe that did that, rolled the dice, and now he's a multimillionaire. But I know most everybody else I know, including me, that has done something like that has lost every single time. There's also the possibility that precious metals goes down. It is, and I actually talked her out of the last two orders. And, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But what she And she actually called me back, and she said, you're right. She goes, I need to reevaluate right now, and then I'll call you back. I don't want to pressure anybody into buying Absolutely anything. Not. And I think you need to, that's what I tell people all the time. I'm like, that's why it's so important to have a financial statement. It's so important to know your net worth. It's so important to know what you have in each asset. And that is what's helped us through the years so much. We're not the best financial people in the world, and we're certainly not financial advisors. But that is, I guess, what's helped us whenever you've come to me. I'll be like, babe, we're heavy in this area, or we're short in this area. Percentage. This is, yes. And that has helped us so much. Instead of just blindly buying something or following whatever someone else is saying or the best thing that I, I ever did in my financial journey was come up with a percentage 
okay, yeah. I want this much in precious metals. Yep. I want this much in mining stocks. I want this much in real estate. And as the economy evolves, mm -hmm. you say, hey, well, let's take, you know, some of that and put over here. Let's, let's you know, right. things are a little volatile, a little weird. Let's beef up our precious metals, yep. you know. Let's... Uh, you know, take away from the rental properties because mm -hmm. people quit paying the rent at 35 percent, 40 percent food prices. Mm -hmm. You know, w when inflation hits 35, 40 percent, people quit paying rent. So, you know, mitigate risk on a percentage basis. That really helps you think through it. And then you'll have the conviction because if you get too heavy into one thing yep. and it starts going down and all your money's in there, you're not going to have the fortitude to stay in it as it's fallen. Because if you're not all the way in, you see the prices of gold and metal dip. Or, and I'm not saying they are. I'm just saying if you see them dip, you'll Anything. have some to buy more. Anything. Say, oh, it's dipped. It's a good deal now. Boom. You can buy some more of that. You're not all in. Because when you're tapped out and you're all in, you just I've been there. Yep. I've been there where you just have to sit there and watch it go mm -hmm. all the way up again. And mm -hmm. you thought, man, I could have bought a bunch of it at the mm -hmm. bottom if I'd have had any money. But I already had it all locked up. So yep. try to keep, you know, I would say a healthy cash position. I think cash has got another good run ahead of it you got to have a conviction i think that is that's what you said and sorry i interrupted you again but i want to just say that really strongly when people call and they ask me about what should they purchase it's got to be a conviction you guys you've got to believe it sorry if you hear a little cat meowing around just right it's now outside cat that yeah, somehow got, made it inside she's the in shop. the shop with us right now um but anyway that is that's something i tell you guys all the time and you have to believe it if you don't believe it don't purchase it i'm not going to try to pressure you one way or the other you got to believe it. Just like you believe in crypto. I'm getting on board, but you believe in it. That's why you went and you did what you did. We believe in real estate. That's why we've done that. That's why we've stocked up on food. We believe it. We have a conviction. If you don't, don't do it. And that's something I can be absolutely wrong on. I'm, I'm good with that. But it's something that I'm going to speculate on. Oh. Not heavy, though, in my opinion. And junior minor stocks, it's something you believe in. Conviction. I, just, I think when people start running to, mm -hmm. to hard currency to hedge their wealth, they're going to need to create more of it. They're going to have to mine the earth like it's never been mined before. And that goes for lithium, copper, uh, precious metals, you know, all the uh, uranium. You know, if we're going to have energy and it's going to be green, in my opinion, it's going to be uranium because windmills and solar doesn't work that good. Not yet. So uh, that's the way I look at it. It's real simple, guys. I'm, I'm kind of a hard asset guy. I don't have fang stocks, not one. No, we just have commodity mainly. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're heavier in commodities than anything else. Mm -hmm. Uh, just because I know we're going to need those in the future. And I know we could get along just fine without Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I know I could. I'm I never despise them, actually. <laughs> what will be the first something to, to crash? Is it going to be the economy? Uh, is it going to be, you know, they're raising interest rates and it crashes the economy? Or are they going to uh, flip the script and start printing money? And, and then the dollar crash. And then, you know, we devalue the dollar to, at an unprecedented rate. You know, the, there's... There's a lot of side currents coming in that's uh, not just straightforward anymore. Used mm -hmm. to be, you know, I had a guy on the other day who was talking about his food 401k. Right. Thought it was brilliant. That's an amazing idea. Uh, and it's kind of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I got an orchard, I got a pond, I'm growing fish. I'm actually going to stock it. I'm going to make a video about stocking we're the pond. We're getting ready to start our garden. We're not going to be as big this year, but I do want, I enjoyed my garden. So we're going to do some. So you can feed your family and possibly yep. sell some. You know, that, that's a, a cool idea because those are things you're going to need. They're hard things, physical things that you're going to uh, need to survive physically. Now, mm -hmm. spiritually, you need God. Absolutely. That's the number one thing. Uh, and I, I get a lot of, uh, I've got the most awesome subscribers. Thank you guys for being here every time in the comments. That's the best part about this channel is the community. Mm -hmm. And as a community, that's how we're going to, grow and get through this thing and nothing pleases me more to see people making contact in the comments hey i live here you, yep. you know we're close and you, that's a you know i have people around me reaching out hey i watch your channel and i live over here so I, i've got contacts all over the place that actually send me information to ninja nation report at gmail.com mm -hmm. and you guys too a lot of you watching do that that's how we get a lot of these amazing stories and stacy gets to talk to them all the time on the phone yes i do yes i do and They're when i have people. time i love listening to your stories i really really do on that note real quick though i typically don't work sundays i will be working today i have been working today this is sunday um and i will be working until late tonight because if you guys do want to lock in i'm going to do my best to get to every single one of you i think i have four more voicemails waiting on me right now 
Um, because I do. I understand that Comex is going to open back up at 5 p.m. You guys are concerned what's going to happen right now. It's about $22.80 and about 1875 for gold. Um, I don't know what's going to happen after that opens up and the trading starts again. So I, I will be working. Uh, unfortunately, I will not be available much tomorrow. So I just kind of want to give you a heads up if you're watching. So if you leave a vet voice ugh, a voicemail, I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But we've got a couple things we have to take care of tomorrow. So Yeah, that's exactly right. And, guys, um, just take care. Please do. Get your stuff in order. Uh, get ready for I, what I b believe is the biggest crash that anybody alive's ever seen. Uh, yeah, maybe worse than the Great Depression. I, mean, we, I hate to even speak that into existence, but we're looking at some stuff that I've never, I've never seen us being this close to war in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I'm talking sure enough World War III. Uh, we're, you know, EMPs. Uh, keep your head on a swivel, as they say. I've actually got a, a gas mask that was sent to me by Mirror Safety. I'm going to do an interview with him. He's a C the CEO of Mirror Safety. We're going to talk nuclear. And I really try to take my channel away from that. I really hate to talk about it. We're going to have to start talking about it. I'm going to have to start as bad as I hate to because I really don't want to be doom and gloom ever. I, I'm, I'm pretty much perpetually optimistic yeah that's what i said at the beginning of this video we do that has been our number one goal is to be as optimistic as possible provide solutions but today you and i both just said we just kind of have a pit in our stomach like this is this is something you talk about you don't really want to see coming but it's here but if you're prepared yeah as much as you can be as nobody's can be. ever prepared for you know the big stuff but if you've got food you got your precious metals and you got money outside the bank and you've got you know stuff community. in order you don't have to freak out and make those you don't make good decisions when you panic nope. we've all been there and nobody's exempt from that nope. so if you'll if you'll kind of take a, a position now and figure out what you're going to do you can adjust accordingly and when something happens you'll say hey you know i got a plan b camper mm -hmm. i can jump in it and go if a train car derails and spews Oh. They, they light it on fire and spew black smoke yeah. all over everybody. You know, I, I've got a, a way to get out a little bit further away with my pew pews and everything I need to survive for a little while. Uh, you're ready for those situations. And that's, that's a, you know, this is a prepping channel, and I believe in being prepared, you know. Uh, prepared, not Proverbs scared. 20, 27, 12. The, the prudence, see danger, and take mm. refuge, and the simple keep going and pay the price. That is so true. So, I'm going to leave you with that. Love it. Guys, have an awesome, awesome day. We'll see you in the next one. Later.